checking out nature, checking out the crocs. So as you can see, the old one here is a little bit past its use by date. It should look like that. There's quite a few crocodiles around here. It's a beauty. It's about, I don't know, three and a half metres. You can see here, looking at the gasket, that's, this, that's the opening that we should have. And we've got a lot more here. So you're going to ask me any something? Well, what are you doing, babe? I knew you were going to ask me that. Well, this is our new BF20 Honda. And uh, when we get up to the Kimberley, we're going to be doing lots of exploring. Like up creeks and rivers. And um, most of the country we're going into is, um, well, I wouldn't say unexplored, but it's not... Um, it's unsurveyed, so you'd never know where rocks are and things. So I thought a wise idea would be to put a prop guard on it, a nice stainless steel prop guard. And I managed to score this one second handy off eBay for uh, one tenth of its original price. So I'm just gonna, it's for exactly for this engine. So what I'm gonna do now is mark up exactly where it has to sit, but I wanna combine that with our SE Sport 200 um, so that that'll go on top like so and all the bolt holes will line up and it'll all go in so this is becoming the most pimped um, tinny or tender uh, I've ever seen we're just adding lots of little fancy bits but because this is going to be like our, our four wheel drive off road vehicle of the Kimberley We've got our 10 horse sitting there, which I'm just doing some um, maintenance to. That's going to be our spare that we're going to carry on nutshell. And then this will be our main exploring engine for when we get up there. So yeah, just, that's what I'm up to. There you go. So I want to have it so that this here protects this here. So if we're smashing into rocks, um, that's got to come down. So that, there we go, just like that. So the stainless will protect the bottom of the skeg. But I don't know if it goes over the top of this or under the bottom. Hmm. Good point. I'll go get some clamps and I'll clamp it into position. And then I'll mark the holes and drill them. Tell me about the floor. Well, I'm going to put a hatch in here so that we can store stuff under the floor because there's heaps of room under this floor so we can like put emergency stuff under there and yesterday I finished wiring up the electric panel so we can now switch our nav lights on and off and switch the sounder on and off switch our charging from the engine coming back on and off I've just got to put a proper battery box in there I've just temporarily got a brace to the um over the frame so yeah that's what I did yesterday look at the little lizard under there see your little head poking yeah. out little lizard <laughs> um, yeah, what else have we done recently we've got twin tanks now we've got our main tank and our reserve tank and we've also got one more tank which is for when we do long trips we'll have we will take three tanks with us I've got to redo these these are just nasty uh, it's a reflector on we've got our nav lights on now so we're all Australian legal because Australia are quite annual about little things like a green light. And what else have I done to it? That's about it recently. I've, I've, I don't like what's happening here. I've not sold on this gunnel st strip. Well, it, would, Kate, it when we picked it up, it was about, well, as far as I was concerned, it was about a fifth of the size of yeah, I thought what it was we gonna be expected a lot it to be. I bought some new vinyl, so that is a lot better than this old stuff we've had for 20 years. Uh, so I'm gonna make new numbers. I'm not happy with this arrangement. I'm going to think about something different. But anyway, that's another job. So, back to the task at hand. Which is this. i get some clamps. Which is this. If you've been watching for a while, you remember that, um, well, it's a few months now, a few
few months ago our uh, voltage regulator started smoking and carrying on and blew up so it's finally arrived i ordered it months and months and months ago but due to um bits and pieces that are happening at the moment the new voltage regulator took a while to get here so that's this morning's job back on uh, nutshell is to refit it so that's the old one it, uh, it shorted out so they're the wires i cut there to in an emergency when it was smoke everywhere just to get the thing solved and you can see she's a bit burnt in there Righto, time to fit her up and put the new one in so as you can see the old one here is a little bit past the choose by date it should look like that let's get on and wire her up so I've now got all the new wires terminated and run back in conduit. I've put in the fuse that was not there last time. I did not have to have one. So I put one in this time. Uh, that runs back. There's another fuse in line here which will mount on the on the engine room wall. And then it runs back in conduit, back to the alternator, and back to where it used to go. So now I'm just going to program it. See that red dot? You get this special tool with it which is the Belmar programming tool. It has a magnet on the end, and you use that magnet to program it by pressing it on the red dot. Right, there we go. All in, wired and working. Another little job while I'm down on the boat today is the uh, take out the uh, heat exchanger for the gearbox. Because if you remember a few months ago, he, it, it developed a leak and it sent raw water down the uh, oil oil line and into the transmission. So we've cleaned all that out now. But I thought I'd take this out and um, take it home in the workshop and see if it can be resurrected. Otherwise, we'll have to go and get another one. Well, I've got a bit of a dilemma. That's the... Um, rivet that I need and they're the only rivets that I can get and now these are all aluminium rivets the shaft is aluminium and the body is aluminium so what I thought I might do is to be clever and actually where are we and knock the rivet section off the pin cut it down to the right length and slide it back on the pin to make a different size rivet. So I'm gonna give that a crack. So, there we go. After a bit of hacksawing, a bit of filing, we now have a heap of rivets the right size. Well, I'm not happy with the amount of corrosion on this exhaust manifold for the uh, heat exchanger. So I priced a new one and it's ridiculous. And you can see here, looking at the gasket, that's, this, that's the opening that we should have. And we've got a lot more here. It's fairly corroded and it's a common problem with these Volvos. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my die grinder and I'm gonna cut all this back. Just started down here, you can see it's a bit shiny. And then I've also bought some, some ultra high temperature, which is, goes up to 1200 degree JB weld putty and I'm going to fill this because I've always had, always had success with JB in the past and we'll see how we go, eh? Something a bit different today um, I'm heading out on Peter and going to check out our local river, the Proserpine River. A bit of a fish, I've got two um, nets to drop down, see if I can get some mud crabs. I haven't, I've been down the Proserpine River once before, about, uh, oh it'd have to be a good 10, 12, 15 years ago, with a mate of mine, John. Uh, if you're watching John, you'll remember that day when uh, you, me and, and Shane uh, went down the river, had a great day out, didn't get any fish or crabs, but we had a great day out. 
got a few catfish, I think. So this river um, starts at well, it starts up in the hills uh, west of Proserpine, and then it meanders down through the cane paddocks and, and the the cattle cattle country, and eventually, uh, after about I don't know, it'd have to be 25, maybe 30 kilometres it ends up at Repulse Bay and uh, flows into the Coral Sea. Now reportedly the Proserpine River has the highest concentration, so the highest amount of saltwater crocodiles of any, any river on the east coast of Australia. So there's an interesting little fact about the Prossy River. To locals it's just called the Prossy River, uh, or the river because there really is only one river around here, apart from where we live in the Gregory River. So, enough waffling. I'm gonna head down there now, about halfway there. I'm going down for another reason, for two reasons. One's to have a day out and go fishing and, and drink a beer, or two. But the other one is, I last week I fitted the propeller guard um, to the new outboard. So, I wanna test that. Uh, on flat water, I've headed out going from the ramp, dinghy dock and the ramp out to the boat, out to Nutshell, but I haven't really tried it in flat water to see the, the difference between not having it and having it as far as performance and economy goes. Because we don't want to sacrifice a heap of performance and a heap of fuel economy to have that guard on. Um, we can, I can cut the guard down a bit and modify it, and so it's not so bulky because we're not it's not on there to protect us from the propeller it's there to protect the propeller from rocks so I'm gonna try that I'm gonna see how it goes in, uh, in down the flat water and uh, I'll get the camera out film a bit of the countryside for you hopefully get a fish um, there's a few barra around at the moment barramundi so I'm hoping to get a, a good sized barra. The season closes in another month and a bit. Um, and hopefully get a couple of monies, a couple of mud crabs. So, got all the gear in the dinghy and uh, we'll go out and see how, how, the day, how the day turns out. Check you later. That's the new prop guard. I've just been for a spin with it on and it's hopeless. Cavitate so badly that uh, it's coming off for this trip. There's quite a few crocodiles around here. It's a beauty. It's about I don't know, three and a half meters, four meters. They're everywhere. I'm a few miles up the river now. Um, about I don't know four miles. I've dropped. Uh, at my two mud crab nets down in this little creek and it comes off the side of the river but just enjoying myself really just uh, checking out nature checking out the crocs the birds um, just trolling along with the line in the water but uh, I'll stop up here in the deep spot with this bit of structure and uh, flick the lure around and see what uh, see what happens doesn't really get much better than this. It is just so peaceful. A fellow needs a bit of this every now and then.
Holy crock. That was a great day out. Um, I ended up with six mud crabs, all under size, so ended up at zero. And uh, one little barra, which was undersized, and a couple of catfish, which I returned. So all I really ended up with was uh, a little bit of sunburn. But uh, good day out. I uh, I tested that that propeller pr uh, protector, and um, I've got to reinvent the wheel there, I think, because it just it just didn't want to work. So I'll revisit that one. But otherwise, great day out. Saw a heap of crocodiles. Um, few eagles. Yeah, really nice day out on the Prosperine River. Cheers.